The calls are growing for University of Pennsylvania President Liz McGill to step down with the New York Post reporting that could happen as soon as today. This after the disastrous testimony on Capitol Hill earlier this week when she and two other university presidents failed to condemn calls for the genocide of Jewish people on campus. Let's bring in Ari Fleischer, the former White House press secretary and a Fox News contributor. Ari, great to see you. So there's blood in the water with these three university presidents. Pershing Square hedge fund CEO and a Harvard alum, Bill Ackman, tweeting on X, they all must resign in disgrace. If a CEO of one of our companies gave a similar answer, he or she would be toast within the hour. The Wharton School of Business Board called for Liz McGill's head, saying, quote, as a result of the university's leadership stated beliefs in collective failure to act, our board respectfully suggests to you and the board of trustees that the university requires new leadership with immediate effect. That's bad enough, but this could be the fatal blow. Financial mogul Ross Stevens pulling a $100 million donation to his former school, UPenn, saying that Liz McGill has got to step down. What do you think about all of this, and what do you think will happen? You know, John, just listening to you in my ear, use the word, calls for genocide against the Jews. How can any moral leader at any institution anywhere not hear those words and say that is a violation of everything we believe in? Yes, it's harassment. Yes, it's bullying. It has no place in our campus, and we will stop it. I mean, just hearing those words aloud, John, almost sends a shiver through me that anybody could come up with a gobbledygooky answer to a simple moral question like that. You know, if I, if I were a student on that campus, and I'm Jewish, how would I possibly think that the president of those universities cares about me or will do anything to protect me? You can't. So, so anybody who watched that hearing will know that Elise Stefanik gave them opportunity after mm -hmm. opportunity after opportunity to address the question. And yet they all equivocated, depends on what the context of it is, yada, yada, yada. So two days later, Liz McGill said, oh, crap, what do we do? And put this out on X. There was a moment during yesterday's congressional hearing on anti-Semitism when I was asked if a call for the genocide of Jewish people on our campus would violate our policies. In that moment, I was focused on our university's longstanding policies aligned with the U.S. Constitution, which say that speech alone is not punishable. I was not focused on, but I should have been the irrefutable fact that a call for genocide of Jewish people is a call for some of the most terrible violence human beings can perpetrate. Uh, your uh, former colleague from the White House, uh, Dana Perino, <laughs> saw that the other day and said that was pathetic. What do you think? Yeah. That's what a PR firm tells you to say. And the problem is, what did she say in the first place when it was her heart that was on display? And she's an Ivy League pre pre president. She is supposed I know. to be smart. <laughs> She's an attorney. And, she and, used to be the head of a law school. this is the dumbest answer you could give. Right. You know, this is the problem with academia. They sometimes wrap themselves up around their own axles that they're not able to see straight. But if you mispronounce a pronoun, if you don't use the right pronoun, or if you say something about certain privilege groups on campus, these presidents, John, are the first ones to come down on you mm -hmm. with a heavy hammer. They don't even let conservatives on campus to give speeches because that's too threatening if a conservative <clears throat> shows up. But you can say genocide against the Jews is now a free speech issue? These people have abandoned the moral authority that should come with being the president of a university. And yes, they should all resign. Many leading people are calling for them to resign, and it's good to see, because it sends a moral message, in this case to the Jewish community, that there yeah. are people who care about them. There are people who know the day after shots are fired at a synagogue in Albany, that this is not an academic issue. It is a real issue involving people's safety. Uh, I want to get uh, one quick thought from you on Hunter Biden and the 56-page indictment that was handed up uh, in the state of California. Abby Lowell came out uh, swinging, saying that if his last name was anything other than Biden, these charges never would have been brought, to which I thought that if his name was anything other than Biden, he'd be in jail. <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. If his name wasn't Biden, he wouldn't have gotten offered the sweetheart deal. And just a moment ago, I referred to that shooting in Albany, and now the person who shot is being charged with the exactly the same thing Hunter Biden has been charged with on his gun offense. He was a drug user who illegally possessed a shotgun, and that's the first charge against the Albany mm -hmm. shooter. So that's just wrong to say it only happened because he's a Biden. And the tax charges are even more serious than the gun charge against uh, Joe Biden's son. But it's really Joe Biden who should be in trouble here because it's Joe Biden who told lie after lie about having, having no relationship with any of Hunter's business associates, that he had no money, received no money, which now seems to be totally contradicted by evidence from bank records showing the money was funneled to Joe Biden, who often used code words, who used pseudonyms and fake email addresses mm -hmm. when he was discussing business matters that involved his son. Joe Biden is the one who's in trouble here, too. All right. Well, although, uh, as the president answered the question the other day, he said it's lies, it's all lies. <laughs> Ari, great yeah. to see you. Good to get your thoughts on this university issue. Appreciate it. Thank you, John. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.